came to my colleagues in my laboratory and I asked them, listen, go to the literature, screen the literature and find which vaccine was never ever reported to associate with any uh, autoimmune effect or autoinflammatory. And they came with one vaccine and it's Nuvovax. And Nuvovax is the only vaccine which does not contain adjuvant. Isn't it interesting? We have vaccines. We have silicon, we have the Gulf War syndrome, we have the MMF, and most probably also chronic fatigue syndrome or the sick building syndrome. What they have in common is the adjuvant, the chronic stimulation of the immune system, which induces most probably cytokines, which are responsible for the chronic fatigue, and they are uh, also infiltrating into the brain to induce the damage uh, in the brain. Because so there are some, uh, there is some evidence which uh, nobody can uh, oppose it even if, among those who do not believe that vaccine can cause autoimmune disease. And this is the report again in the unknown journal, New England Journal of Medicine, 1998, when the swine influenza vaccine was given and there was a significant um, uh, increase in Guillain-Barré syndrome. I would mention Guillain-Barré syndrome is a neurological condition of paralysis of the legs or sometimes it's go it goes to the upper part of the body. And there was no question about it. Actually, there was a second paper in New England Journal of Medicine about 10 or 15 years afterward, 10 years afterward, showing that when they changed something in the vaccine, there was less induction of Guillain-Barré syndrome, but still it was higher than in the regular population where you know the prevalence of guillain barre syndrome. Also with the polio vaccine, we know that uh, it induces transverse myelitis. There was no question about it. This was recognized also by the National uh, Academies of the United States and by Inst Institute of Medicine. Uh, it is well recognized and quite prevalent that um, subject to receive the DTP and the rubella vaccine will develop arthritis. Actually, we know that sometimes patients with rubella, the native rubella, they develop arthritis. So it's not surprising that if you take this virus ingredient, you put it into adjuvant, you will enhance this reaction or maybe even increase the incidence uh, of this arthritis. There are other um, uh, associations, as you can see here, and there are some, first of all, in dogs, then in mice, in rats, and even in salmon who are grown in uh, wild and farm um, um, as, um, as, a, as, a, as we will say salmon. So a, a veterinarian um, noted that dogs after being vaccinated, they complained about different complaints or maybe their owners complained about different complaints. And when he examined 20 dogs that he immunized with different vaccines, he found a really a panoply of autoantibodies. One of them, for instance, antilaminin, which is a classical autoantibody in uh, SLE. This is, by the way, my dog who was not vaccinated. And so then he published another paper in the journal Lupus, and he was able to show that some of the salmons have changes in their bones, which or um, joints, which resemble very much the panus-like changes that you can see in rheumatoid arthritis. Another model, a very nice model, is in alopecia areata. It's boldness, but you don't have hair anywhere in your body. And I have to say that the NIH gave a lot of money to study this um, peculiar autoimmune condition because it's very accessible for biopsies because it's in the skin, so you can analyze it. And indeed, the autoantigen was found. Uh, there were many reports to show that the alopecia uh, developed following uh, hepatitis B vaccine. So somebody used a model, an animal model for alopecia, a natural, um, spontaneous model which developed the alopecia areata and vaccinated the uh, rats. And as you can see, the rats who were vaccinated with hepatitis B developed the alopecia earlier than the uh, placebo group. As I mentioned, and here I had a lot of um, criticism about what uh, Dr. Pavelski said, in regular immune system, we have the primary response, we have the secondary response, and this is the basis for the vaccine, that the secondary response is much more stronger, and this protects you, and this is the idea behind the vaccine.
see nobody mentioned it here. And uh, so what happened is that the secondary response is quicker and usually it takes about uh, the first response about two to three weeks. And this is the idea why the judges and the special master are looking for this period of 21 days to show the cause and effect relation. There is another uh, reason because when you take the classical autoimmune disease rheumatic fever and um, uh, the rheumatic fever always appears three weeks after the streptococcal infection. So they want the three weeks of rheumatic fever because the molecular mimicry between the streptococcal envelope and the different organs involved in rheumatic fever are exactly three weeks. But we know that, as I mentioned before, and this is again a paper in the unknown journal, New England Journal of Medicine, showing that autoantibodies may proceed by years the, there is some kind of a long incubation time, as well as there are other studies which I show here. Uh, for instance, when you follow patients who were vaccinated for flu and you measure autoantibodies, some of them appear only after six months. So there is some kind of a, an incubation period of the vaccine in which they induce the auto. Uh, antibody. These are studies that when um, hepatitis B vaccine were shown to associate with multiple sclerosis, um, they were uh, uh, criticized very much. But if you follow these patients after three years, a paper that was published in Neurology, you can see that after three years there was a close um, association between the, those who develop the hepatitis, uh, develop multiple sclerosis, and those who receive the hepatitis uh, B virus. The same story appe appeared also with the um, uh, papilloma virus vaccine. We have talked about it too much today, and you can see in the paper recently in JAMA in 2009, they showed that only after two and a half years of follow up, uh, the patient developed, and I want to draw your attention to Guillain Barre syndrome, transfer myelitis. So you can see that most of the manifestations were neural uh, manifestations. Um, so I will skip this and I will skip this and let's go to the possible mechanism. What are the mechanisms by which vaccine can induce autoimmunity? There are different aspects of the vaccine and somebody already talked about it. We have the antigens of the bacteria, of the viruses, uh, mimicking the um, regular virus and by that also mimicking uh, some of the uh, ingredients of our body constituents. Uh, but there are also the preservatives and we have also the adjuvant. And as I mentioned, there are many mechanisms by which adjuvant increase the immune reactivity. Because he showed very clearly, clearly that the macrophage myofasciitis is associated with the adjuvant and specifically the alum. And these are some pictures which I've taken from his book, but I would like you to draw against your attention to the clinical manifestation. Myalgias, chronic weakness, severe weakness, and sometimes also um, a, Neurological manifestation, if I remember well in your first paper, you published the third of the patients developed eventually multiple sclerosis. And the time period, again, was not 21 days or two months or three months. It came up to eight years. Uh, so it shows that there is a long um, incubation time. This is the paper that I discussed with you about the appearance of macrophage myofasciitis in children. It came out from uh, Israel. So uh, 